Hello and welcome to another League Race in the AOR PC Split 1 League on F1 2016. I'm Fizzy and we are here for round 12 of the season at the German Grand Prix. It's Hockenheim which is a track that I'm very, very much a fan of. I do enjoy driving most of the corners on here, maybe apart from the heaven. And I've got some uh, good memories uh, from this track as well in uh, the past, most notably the uh, race back in Season 6, I believe, on F1 2012 on the Xbox 360 League, when I was matching the pace of people like Limitless, x G and Noble for uh, the race. Unfortunately, finished fourth just behind them after being passed by Noble on the final lap, but uh, still, back then, that was a big result for me. Anyway, we are now, as you can see, on our qualifying lap for this race. Not long to go in the session, we've already got a 114.9 on the board, which was an okay banker lap, but uh, definitely could be improved on, as, as, and as you can see, we've gained Quite a bit of time there in the um, in the hairpin. We uh, lost a bit of time to, to a previous lap actually in the first sector, but then getting back in the hairpin. And yeah, the goal of course with this lap is uh, you know being in 11th place on the grid right now. Um, oh, that's an honor. It's actually left the session there. That's a shame. That's not the time we want to be there because we had to control some overstay on the curb before heading into the final sector of the lap, which uh, is really fun to drive in my opinion. I know quite a few people don't like this sector. But uh, I find it a lot of fun to drive, very technical, you have to be very precise. And as you can see we're again down our previous lap time actually, so it's not been a big improvement this. But here we go, gained it back through the final two corners with a decent run through there. And let's see how high up we can get P7, that's uh, certainly better than P11. And we do have time for another lap as well, but unfortunately we weren't able to improve on that one. So 8th uh, is what we ended up in in the end. And a similar story to uh, Hungary in the sense that everyone's qualifying. Uh, on the softer tires, the spider tire wear glitch, and that is again because the race start is predicted to be wet. And here we go then. It is very wet indeed as we sit on the starting grid, and uh, intermediate tires will be the preferred starting option, as you can see. But the forecast also said that it was going to dry up at some point during the race. So that'll certainly be interesting, that'll be the first, you know, uh, changeable conditions uh, race that uh, we've had uh, this season, if so. So, uh, let's see what we can do, or as usual, going into this race, just uh, hoping for the best, trying to get as high as we can. And now, the lights are out for the German Grand Prix, a reasonably average launch there from the line. Heading into turn one, which is pretty tricky at the start of the race, you gotta leave enough room for the cars around you, and everyone's done it very well there, it seems. No incidents in sight, which is a good sign, and a welcome uh, change from Hungary last time out, as we're now going for the inside line on Massachusetts, and Ali being pretty slow there. Ahead of us, we have to make sure to not avoid him. Massachusetts still on our left-hand side. As we come onto the straw, oh my god, and there's a big collision between Nally and Nick B, I think that was. Looked like Nick B got some overs there and uh, ended up towards the outside of the track, and now he's actually retired, so Nick B clearly has uh, ended up in the wall there with damage as we go into the heavy with one car either side. Who's that on the inside? That's AR Veloci, who is new to the league and has gone for the opportunistic move of the inside there. Had to leave him room, but luckily we managed to hold on from the suburb of Massachusetts, at least, who's got Kel on side one side with him back there. And there's a battling going on up ahead as well. Marek now running wide through the Mercedes corner. Nuka moving up to second, it looks like. Tiran Sigur, of course, is starting to run away out in front already. Afro, another relatively new driver, made his debut last time, I believe. Also doing well up in the top four. And as you can see, Massachusetts has managed to hair hold off Kellon behind as we nearly are staring into the gravel going into the stadium section which is very easy to do, especially in these conditions, but luckily we were able to just about stay out of it. Got some uh, bad memories from uh, races around here on the previous games uh, of uh, ending up in uh, the gravel. And, uh, you know, when you do end up in the gravel there, it usually doesn't uh, end, turn out too well. But anyway, a nice clean first lap. We gained one position, uh, uh, two positions even, from where we started. Helped, of course, by that incident between uh, Nelly and Nick. Now on lap 2 we got very close to Afro in uh, the middle of the hairpin, struggling a little bit with uh, the traction on the exit of it, which means that Massachusetts now is going to be right on the back of us, going out into uh, turn 8 again. He's looking for the inside line, I mean, left him a room there on the inside to be safe, but we try to keep the momentum on the outside, and uh, so far we've done a decent enough job, leaving a little bit of room just in case Massachusetts has a tiny bit of his nose alongside. We've got to you kind of have to leave margins sometimes on this game because the potential for lag and desync and stuff like that as Massachusetts now still trying to go up the inside here and again we're forced to defend with the outside line side by side through the stadium section here which isn't an easy thing to do and so far we managed to hold on but Massachusetts not giving up 
as we try to control the car now with a tighter inside line for the final corner. Can we get fast enough on the traction here to hold Massachusetts off into turn one? I mean, it's a not a really easy place to overtake, but uh, oh my god, he's actually gone for it. He's actually gone for it on the inside, which is exactly what I didn't really want to happen, which uh, has a compromise to exit there as well, and Keller now is trying to slip through and take advantage. So again, we're forced to leave room on the inside. Can we keep enough speed this time? Oh no, oh, that won't help with the uh, major slide which we managed to control but again lost exit time because of it and now Marco FD is trying to get involved after having qualified uh, much lower than he normally does and he's again looking to the inside I keep in you know just a tiny bit too late to defend the inside lines for the corners there and I was just following Kel and trying to not hit him a tiny bit of contact there but uh, no damage done and we've managed to keep at least Marco behind us Kel now taking a very interesting line on the exit of the help of the hairpin, but uh, nah, the longer way around there meant we weren't able to take advantage. So, uh, whew, it's been an interesting uh, <laughs> first couple of laps there. Quite a bit of battling in these conditions, and we are now back to P8, which is the position we started in. We'll skip on to lap four now. The Massachusetts uh, starting to pull away a little bit. Kellen though running really wide through turn two, which meant we again had to compromise our exit a little bit to not run into him. But uh, luckily we seem to be very close to him and now with a slipstream maybe we can have a move down towards the hairpin. No DRS of course in these conditions so we're going to have to do it all ourselves but we have got more straight line speed at the moment. And this time for once we do have the inside line for a corner but oh we've gone way too deep, way too deep into the hairpin. Unusual to break with that inside line and we clearly just messed it up, break a little bit too late. Kellen has just uh, defended that with the cutback as Marco FD disappeared from behind us. Pretty sure what happened to him. She came now the car behind in ninth place. And as we move on to lap eight, you can see the gap to Kellen up ahead. Two seconds now, and the gap to Nally behind all of a sudden is 4.6. So the guys behind clearly have had quite a bit of battling, or maybe an incident uh, that has lost them a lot of time. As now, oh, that's a car. Force India slow. That's ex excellent. Well, I'll just call him Afro. And uh, that's a big shame for him. Something's happened to Afro. And. Uh, I believe he's gone into the pit lane, or maybe he hasn't. As we're now going through uh, Invisible Sauber, that is Nick, uh, Nicky, who was uh, unfortunately disconnected from the lobby. So, lap 9 then, and you can see the uh, weather is maybe drying up a little bit. Still very overcast, still some raindrops, but St. Kellen ahead has actually gone into the pit lane already. That seems a little bit early. There's another car in the pit as well, as we have a bit of overstep moment, Nuka, and he's gone onto the medium tyres as Nuka, and I assume Kellen will be going on the dries as well, having pitted, uh, well, there's no way, <laughs> no reason to, uh, you know, not do that. So on the next lap, I decided to not respond, and uh, stay out for another lap, just like the top five, but at the end of lap 11, I saw that all of the leaders went into the pits, and uh, you can see it's visibly drying up as well, so I've decided to follow them in, so I believe this is the time to go onto the dry tyres. So, what tires do we go on then? Let's have a look. Soft tires then, the middle of the three uh, compounds here. It will be interesting, of course, to see what people do with strategies now. It's a unusual one, you know, having had the first 10 laps kind of uh, removed from the normal strategy plans. Now having to make a strategy plan for, you know, a, a smaller portion of the race. But we haven't managed to jump Kellon in the pits, actually. So we're in sixth place coming out. So I don't know whether that's because Kellon's had a problem or if uh, we just timed our pits up better. Maybe he went in a little bit too early. But he's 1.4 seconds behind us now. And on the medium tires, same with Massachusetts ahead, head also on the mediums. Whereas we are now getting a purple second sector on these soft tires. But then having our dreams crushed immediately after by Tigger setting the fastest lap. So it's not going to be any fastest lap for us at the moment, I'm afraid. But you can see though, we are visibly gaining on the two cars ahead. Massachusetts now battling with Nuka for P4, and we are gaining a lot on these soft tires, both of those guys on the mediums, which of course will be more durable, and uh, they'll have to uh, you know, be less wary of tire wear, but uh, these soft tires are faster at the moment, and we're now right at the back of Massachusetts. Seems to be struggling a little bit in this final sector. He passed us earlier in the race in the wet into turn one. Can we pass him now in the dry into turn one to uh, repay the favor? And yes, we can. Keep it on the track as well. Move done for P5 on Massachusetts here. And so far, it seems like the strategy of going into the soft rather than the medium for this uh, stint uh, is working out well. But of course, the question remains, 
how bad is the tire wear going to be on these uh, tires and will it affect what tires I can go on to on the next stint. Of course, these guys uh, have gone to the mediums now, will presumably be going on to the super soft on the final stint and it depends on the tire wear on these softs as to whether I can do the same. So we'll just have to monitor the tire wear and uh, make that judgement as we go along. We are now on lap 19 out of 34 with DRS active down into turn 2 and we will have another uh, nice DRS opportunity on a Nuka now on the big straight to move up into 4th place if we can get this done. Here we go, there we go, DRS enabled and uh, we should now be superior on the straight line speed because of it. Moving to the inside line, can we have the braking right this time on this inside? Yes, hitting the apex nicely and job done again for P4 in the race. Clearly the dry uh, weather is uh, <laughs> working better for us than what the wets did and uh, hopefully we'll be able to hold these guys off uh, uh, despite the, the tire wear struggles that we might face uh, you know, to a greater extent than them in uh, the coming uh, laps. But at the moment it is uh, looking uh, decent so let's just keep plugging along, keep uh, trying to focus, keep trying to enjoy driving this track in the, the dry conditions and hopefully that will be enough for a good result here. Gap to uh, Veloci ahead though, 6.9 seconds. I'm not sure whether we'll be able to uh, close that in, but you never know, things might happen. But for now though, Nuka still relatively close behind, but we've managed to pull him, uh, you know, at least from immediate uh, uh, threat range here as we come onto the nearest uh, straight on the next lap. And now at the end of lap 21, you can see we are keeping the gap to uh, Nuka and Massachusetts to bit over a second now, as actually Veloci has, is now in the pit lane for a, a pretty early final stop. So we've gone up to P3 now, onto a podium position, but of course we're also going to have to make a pit stop two laps later. Lap 23, the tire wear as you can see now, very very bad indeed, 65% on the front left as the worst tire. Nuka and Massachusetts both carry out on out on track with their, their mediums, but uh, I've decided to take the plunge, it may be a risk to go on the super soft with this long to go in the race, 11 laps allowed to do with them but based on the strategy testing I did before this race I feel like this might just work if I uh, keep my tires in nice shape here on the final stint so at the end of lap 24, Afro going to the pits which is gonna push us up to P5 and actually I've just noticed that Veloci is behind us he pitted like 6 seconds ahead of us and now Veloci is behind us by a couple of seconds, so not quite sure what's happened to him. Maybe he's had an incident or made a mistake, but definitely uh, he's lost uh, quite a bit of time somewhere. And the gap to Massachusetts ahead, 11.8. And he's uh, obviously with a Nuka still, as you can see on the minimap. So when those guys go into the pit lane, we will surely be in an actual third place position here. Which is uh, <laughs> quite a turnaround from... Uh, where we were when it was raining, struggling a little bit uh, down in 8th place, but now suddenly things are looking much much brighter in this race. And as you can see we're pushing hard now as well on our first few laps on this stint, rich fuel mix uh, being used while the super soft tires are in uh, their best state. And we are on for a purple lap here, uh, a full second faster than our previous best lap in the race through the second sector, and of course surely fresh super soft tires will also be good for this final sector where uh, grip is important. So let's just nail these final couple of corners for a bit of at least temporary fame here. Get my name shown up in purple for everyone. A bit of overset there though, that might ruin it a little bit there, but it didn't. Fastest lap of the race, 16.1, which, uh, you know, I know it probably won't stand because of people like Tigger also uh, going on to better tires at some point, but uh, it always feels good, doesn't it, to have your name up in, in purple for, for a bit. And it's something that obviously doesn't happen to me too often. But now though, at the start of lap 27, Nuka and Massachusetts both in to the pit. So we are now legitimately in third place in the race. Veloci is also going ahead of those guys. So he's in fourth. And we have gained a lot, a lot of time on Nuka and Massachusetts from doing the undercut going in earlier and onto these tires and pushing hard on the first few laps as well. We've also extended the gap to Veloci, who, uh, well, there was 4.3 seconds there. But now, as you can see, we're on the penultimate lap of the race, still with a 6.6 second gap and the tire wear starting to go up a bit 58% on the front now 
but it's still not looking too bad. So I think, guys, that we've absolutely nailed it on this strategy. And now, as you can see, final lap of the race as well. These guys, the, the guys behind, have not been able to catch us at all. Nuka has gone ahead of Massachusetts, though. But the tire wear is, you know, <laughs> it might have been difficult to go further laps from this one. But we have timed it to absolute perfection, and we are going to finish in third place in this race. Definitely unexpected having started from P8, so I'm very, very happy with that. My fourth podium of the season, and another 15 points in the bag for the championship. Nuka got uh, uh, the P4 ahead of Massachusetts in the end. I believe, uh, actually, Kellum then gets sixth, it says. Afro just behind him in seventh. I'm not sure where Veloce is then gone. But he is in P8, as you can see there, um, which, oh yeah, he had some penalties, yeah, 9 seconds worth of penalties. Marika had also ha had some penalties, but the gap to the top 2 from where I was was just way too big. Tigger dominating again, and Marika also with a very strong performance. So for the driver Championship then, with a 12 out of 21 races done and dusted, and because of Nodrunner's unfortunate disconnect in qualifying and inability to get back in, that means we're only three points behind him, actually for second place. I'm not too, too confident in actually catching him, unless he has keeps having problems like this. But uh, uh, yeah, because he's, you know, he's, he's the second best driver in the league in pace um, consistently throughout the season. But of course, I will keep trying my best, and we'll just have to see where it takes us in the end. The gap to Marco and Nuka behind also increasing, so it looks it's looking good at least for a top three position in the championship. And Renault still, despite me being a, a sort of a lone driver with the race fanatic, still having problems with his pedals and un unable to race because of it. I am keeping Renault nicely in P2 in the constructors. So guys, that was Hockenheim. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did enjoy this race. Always a pleasure to drive around this track, in my opinion. And of course, uh, the next race we go to isn't uh, too much worse. Uh, if anything, it's uh, probably better. That is a Spa Francochamps, of course, in Belgium. That'll be the next one. So I hope you will join me for that one. Thank you very much for watching this video. Leave a like if you did enjoy, and I'll see you for Belgium for hopefully another fun race. Until then, hope you have a nice day. Hope you have a nice week. Hope you have a nice everything. And goodbye.